Greetings to our E-Church family and friends around the world. So happy you took some time out of your Wednesday to join us again. Do what you do, and I want to expand, expand our reach, share this lesson, share this class tonight with some family and friends. And let's come on into the lesson as the Lord would just lead and guide us and bless us through the teaching of the word. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Pray with me before, before we get started. Father, tonight in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace that you have allowed us once again to come and to share your word. And those that are tuning in and coming online with us, we ask, so oh God, as they would be blessed and safe or in their homes, wherever they're at. Those that are bereaved and those that are uh, under pressure because of life, we ask, so oh God, you would be the God of comfort, strengthen, heal, build, and cause us to understand that you are greater in us than anything that's in the world that's against us. Send healing to every home, peace to every house, and to every soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, beloved. I'm so happy again that you took time out of your Wednesday to spend a few moments with us. We'll try to our best to be pointed and to be very clear in the lesson. Our theme for the month of June is dream big dream big. And I pray that something we're going to say tonight is going to give you some tools to help you along your way as you are building and you're dreaming big. Listen to this. It is not hyperbole or an extravagant claim to take lightly when someone, when a miracle moment has come. Hyperbole, extravagant claim. You don't take it lightly when you see a miracle moment. Dreaming big brings and create miracle moments. A time when the idea has come, where the uncommon do extraordinary things. And that's what I think God is teaching us in these lessons, that the average or uncommon person is going to be seen doing extraordinary, thing, er, extraordinary things, where nobody becomes somebody because of the divine dream or they believed God for more. They believed in themselves, they planned, they worked hard, and they finished strong. All right? And nobody becomes somebody because they dreamed, believed God, believed in themselves, planned, worked hard, and finished strong. So again, tonight, I'm going to give you a lot of points of interest that are going to put you on track. Some of you already do this as you know that dreaming goes with plan, planning goes with preparation to get to your final um, objective. Our key scripture is in Ephesians 3 and 20, um, and it says in the NIV, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we, ask, all we can, all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. We established last week that Paul here is speaking to us about spiritual things to the Ephesian church and to us as members of the body of Christ. It's an immeasurable, more than we can imagine, according to the power of the Holy Spirit that works within us. He can do more. Dreaming big is seeing God do more, unimaginable, according to the power that works within us spiritually. And I'm focusing on natural tonight spiritually and natural. Big or bigger is relatively referring to higher heights are larger capacities. Higher heights are larger capacities. It's making our goals and visions for our future a little bigger, just a little brighter and a little bigger. Dreams are comments to goal. We said this last week. Therefore, dreams need a realistic well laid out plan. I can dream, but I need to lay out a plan or how I'm going to get there. Um, uh, with benchmarks, of course, in mind, and making sure that we are reaching our goal step by step and hitting those benchmarks as we are reaching those, those goals. For example, you might be dreaming about getting a new job. Some of you are possibly tired of the job you're on. You want to go to another job. Don't Curse or don't demise or speak down on your job. Prepare for where you're trying to go. Don't leave wrong, leave right, but make sure you're going somewhere before you leave. Don't just walk off the job. I'm through with this job. Then what are you going to do? Well, God's going to make a way. Then how is that going to be laid out for a plan of action and benchmarks to get to that way that God's going to make? 
dreams of getting another dream to get a new job. You might want to say that I, I want I want more pay. I want less hours and a whole lot of PTO, personal time off. That's the new job I want, the perfect job. I dream about it. I'm trying to get there. However, it's going to take some action items before you get there. Maybe you dream about making enough money to support your family, dreaming, or to be comfortable enough to be able to ex export, support your extended family. You always want to help someone, but how is this going to happen? Watch this. Track with me. These are good ambitions. However, dreaming big or dream big needs, again, a well-laid plan and a good understanding of yourself. Do I have the capacity to hold more? And, what, and, and what's my threshold and tolerant level? Do I have the capacity to hold more? And how much can I, can I stand? Um, wanting to be an employer is a great responsibility. You can't be an employer with an employee mindset. You have to think about build, building bigger. And when you've been an employee, sometimes too long, and you want to become an employer, you wound up stifling your position because you think more of an employee. Clock in, clock out, go home. It's not my business, it's your business. So I just want to get paid and get my 40 hours. But you, as an employer, the owner, you have to dream big and think wider and larger. And ask yourself, do I have the capacity to move this business up to the next level? Watch this. More money, more problems. Less money, greater problems. Mm -hmm. Just enough money won't be enough money because you're going to run out. Um, my thought of that is that you can't keep living week to week in a two-week paycheck and think you're going to keep getting ahead. It ain't going to happen because before you know it, you'll start living within that week to week or two weeks and start getting an, an advance on the two weeks that has not even happened yet. You're falling further and further behind. So you've got to dream bigger and get out in front of it and make sure you have reserve for where you're trying to go. You have to keep moving forward is what I'm saying. You have to keep moving forward. If you're not moving forward, then you're moving backwards. You're regressing and you're not progressing. So I have to take a strong look at myself and watch this. I'm gonna get just a little uh, psychological, which I know a little bit about this, but listen to what I gotta say. A little psychological in the process of dreaming bigger and dreaming smaller. Dreaming smaller, it has a lot to do with the environment that we grew up in. Like most of us, we had basic jobs that were growing up as kids or in, in our younger life. Um, working jobs like uh, working at the uh, uh, fast food restaurants. Uh, we, we did things like working at the car wash, just menial tasks, busting tables, cutting grass, uh, maybe worked a little bit in construction, but these were, this was the environment we kind of grew up in. And it, it helped shape us in some way because we, we didn't grow outside that environment. Not everyone, but most of us in those, working those small jobs to get to the big job. Um, I, I contended, I, uh, uh, not contended, I'm sorry. I, I, I see this as like a fish in a small tank. And if that fish is in a small tank, akin to a fish in a small tank, the fish is only going to grow so much big, it's going to grow as big as the tank that it is in. When you put it in a bigger tank, if the fish has capacity to get larger, it'll grow larger. Some of you are moved out of a small tank into a bigger tank. And that's when you're going to grow bigger and dream bigger. Never seen anyone outgrow their space unless they got into a bigger space. And in that space, they couldn't really outgrow it. The feeling of having more awakens in all of us from time to time. However, dreaming bigger and that awakening causes us to have to again have a plan and make sure we fit into that position properly. That hunger within us for more sometimes can be a bit overwhelming and causes you to keep asking yourself, mm, do I really want to do this? Do I want to stretch myself to go for more? You will be determined by that, by the uncomfortability. You, the, the determination of that is the uncomfortability of staying in that small place. Again, as I told you, I did the, minimum, the small jobs, working my way to the bigger jobs. Because I realized that life was about work, so I had to learn how to work smarter and harder. I know some say I want to work smarter and not harder, but 
Sometimes you got to twist that, turn that around, realize if you're going to achieve anything, you're gonna, it's going to be some sweat equity that's going to be put into it. Hard work for big things. When you finish, when I finished high school, I went to a few years of junior college and I, I promote education, I promote college, but I didn't see myself in a, in a focused attitude for college. So I tried to let life be my university and never stop learning. So everywhere I would go was my university, church, jobs, school, home, visiting friends, everywhere I was a student to this day, I remain a student so I could keep learning and growing and developing. I, I, I saw this as it akin, akin to um, increasing learning. So I got in construction. When I got in construction, I was working on the small side of construction. So I of the construction trade, so I took classes and I advanced myself because I was dreaming of being this master carpenter. I was a car carpenter to be able to take care of my family and be also be able to take care of my own personal life and grow from that. Why carpentry, Pastor House? Well, I didn't have a skill to play instruments or to write or writings or drawings or art. Um, my, I didn't have the, the strong intelligence to have to become a business owner and be a CEO of something, <laughs> and God put me in a church. But I figured that people are going to be building forever, so construction was going to be there. And it was always pays good if you get into the right field of construction. You see the problem with many of us that we, we grow up, we grew up in, a, in an environment that, again, that shapes, uh, shaped us. And that environment that shaped us caused our dream to be small or to push us to dream big. Not knowing what it was going to take to dream big, but we began to dream. Realizing that we could rise above the norm. We never seen too many people around us that did it, but we always had thoughts that we could do it. Sometimes it stifled us because no one that we knew personally, or if we did, they were the exception to the rule that dreamed big and got out and did greater things. Does not, does not stop you and I from dreaming. Remember, if you have small dreams, it's nothing. It's a simple thing. It's about living an ordinary life. Nothing wrong with that. But that's where you will stay or you will grow at in your capacity. However, remember, someone said, the sky is the limit. So I don't have to just keep dreaming or having small dreams. The sky is the limit. But big dreams say this, or dreaming big say, it. there is no limit. There is no limit. We take the limits off tonight. We take the limits off. Okay. So I'm using this, this theme, dream big, to stretch us and test us and to see how you really reach your capacity. Or is there more that God has in store for you? Let's look at a story in the Bible in 2 Kings 6 chapter. It's in verse 1 through 7. I'm going to paraphrase it so I can keep moving. It was a school of prophets, um, and they had outgrown the space that they were in. So they started a building program. The students went to Jordan, down to the Jordan River, and began to cut down trees to build a school there by the river a larger place, a better place for them to dwell. As they began to grow, Elijah, they asked Elijah, could they go? And he told them, go ahead and go. So they went to the place, and they realized the place they were at, watch this in first, Second Kings, the, uh, the sixth chapter. They said the place we were at is too small. Dreaming big moves you out of too small, too small. So they wanted him to go with them. He says, okay, I'll go with you. And let's see what you're going to do. So they got down to the river. They began to cut down these trees. And before you know it, they moved from small thinking to big thinking. Bigger facility was ha coming. Bigger dreams was happening because they had the word go. Before they knew it, one of the axe heads fell off into the water. And it slowed down the production of the work. S stay with this. And dreaming bigger, Elijah would not let them be alarmed by the loss of the axe head. When you're dreaming bigger, <clears throat> you need good people around you to let you know that unforeseen things are going to happen. Delays will take, will happen even in the progress, but you cannot stop until you reach completion of your work. 
So he told the young man in verse six and seven, he says, where did it fall? That means your power, your emotion, your, uh, your inspiration, your, your enthusiasm, where did you drop it off at? Show me the place where you stop being excited about your dream. Elijah cuts down a stick, a type of Jesus Christ, throws it in the muddy waters of Jordan, and the axe head began to float back to the top, to the river's edge. And watch this. He told him, grab it and pick it up. So that's what I'm teaching tonight to someone that's listening. Grab it and pick it up again. Pick up your dreams. Pick up your ambitions for life. Pick up your living capacity and go for it. The young man reached out and picked it up. But I want you to note in verse 6 and 7 of 2 Kings 6, he was a prophet. He had already per prophesied or foresaw what they, he was going to accomplish, but he ran into a problem. But he reached out and grabbed his power back and picked it back up. So instead of going down, pick it up and come up. Take your dream back into your hands. It's yours. See it come to fruition. So if you intend to reach higher heights, dreaming bigger and extending to a larger capacity, uncertainties will happen. Things will go left in a moment, but don't let anything stop you from reaching your goal, your goal. You will need to shift your mindset when you're dreaming, going from dreaming small to dreaming bigger. You have to expand out of the environment you grew up in, like I did, and stretch your mindset. Some of the things that I worked on and, and, and training myself from small thinking to bigger thinking, I want to share with you tonight. Dreaming bigger requires big confidence. I want you to write that down for me, big confidence. Confidence here is trusting God and self-assurance. Trusting in God and being believing in yourself. That's the first thing of dreaming big. Trusting in God, self-confidence, trusting God, and believing in yourself. The Bible says in John, 1 John 5 and 14, the new NIV, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I'm confident that if he hears us, then we have the petition that we asked of him. I'm approaching God with confidence. Having confidence is what you know, in what you know, and if you can't change the way things are at the present, then learn how to monetize off of what you have. I have confidence, but this is where I'm at right now. I'm working, making only X, Y, D, Z dollars an hour. I know I can't be getting to my dream slow. I would be slow getting to my dream, just working on a 40 hour work week. I have to diversify where I'm at and make sure that I monetize from where I'm at right now. Quit putting myself in unneedful debt, just having to push myself out and push credit cards out, Stop bag, start bagging that down and cut up some of those cards. Watch this. I believe this is my season where God's ability overtakes my inability. And I'm divinely enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit to do what I couldn't do before. Like Samson, Lord, strengthen me, he said, only this once. And God gave him the power to defeat his enemy. God will give you strength that you have not tapped into yet. Confidence, confidence. Trusting God and believing in yourself. Philippians 1 and 6. He that begun the good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. There's so many other good nuggets here I want to talk about, but I want to move you on through this lesson. The second thing is dreaming big requires overcoming fear of failure and fear of success. In my book, Unplug, I talk about some things about overcoming these fears of failures and, and fears of success. Fear of not being able to make it, and if I make it, will I change or will I be the same? Don't worry yourself about those things. Do not operate out of fear, but operate out of faith. Amen? Another one is this here. He says, um, fear, fear, uh, uh, dreaming. Dreaming bigger requires a, men, a, mindful, a mindful imagination. I like this because a mindful imagination, you start visualizing or seeing yourself 
on the other side of your struggle, struggle, mindful imagination. Um, and uh, I'm an executive now of, of a company. I'm running my own business. I'm, I, I'm visualizing this, my mindful imagination. I'm traveling the world. I'm living, I'm living in my dream home. I can see it. I can see it coming, dreaming bigger, bigger. I'm traveling. Uh, I'm, I'm traveling to beach houses. I'm flying on private planes. I'm selling on. I'm selling on yachts. I'm in another whole world. I, I use these points of interest of traveling, flying, selling, shopping with no limits. And now put your mindful imaginations in those things and begin to feel it, realizing that you're in that space. Lock yourself into the scenario of what you want to achieve for your life. Before you know it, memories start awakening something inside of you and you really find what you really like and what awakens your appetite for more. There are key things that can do this. It's almost like the woman um, in Mark 5 when, when she said within herself that Jesus was in the crowd, but she said within herself after she spun all her money, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, then I know I shall be made whole. Or touch his clothes. I taught about that. I want to use it as a mindful imagination. This woman just felt, if I can just get to where he is, then I believe my struggle will be over. And it happened to her. She was healed, the Bible says, in that very self-same hour. Dreaming bigger requires finding meaning. What do I want out of life? What, get, what brings me passion? One of, the, one of my greatest passion is, is, is being, um, seeing people reach their goal, seeing people reach their full potential and be happy. Something great when you are a, a, akin to or support to helping someone reach their goal or, or reach for their dream and they get there. They sometimes come back and say thank you and appreciate that you inspired them to keep going. Dreaming bigger requires an effective goal setting. We talked about those things. An effective goal setting is writing things down, making sure you take action items on your dream, uh, of the dreams that you have coming into your mind, analyzing what you're doing, figure out the steps by steps that it's going to take to get there. Dreaming bigger, planning, preparing, and finishing. Say that with me tonight, planning, preparing, finishing. If I'm going to dream, I got to plan, prepare, and finish. It's akin to me of Luke 14, 28. For which of you, I'm reading from the New King James, which of you intends to build a tower and does not sit down first and count up the cost whether he has enough to finish it? It's one thing to, to dream that I'm going to build this thing, but I have to sit down before I jump out to do something and realize I need to have a plan and know what it's going to cost and what it's going to take to finish it. I was thinking about a little story, but I'll let that pass my mind right now. But dreaming big requires taking actions also. Taking a step-by-step -step, step progress and getting busy doing what it's going to take to get it done. It's the hard work that gets the big things done. Getting out the blocks of a runner, sometimes the greatest thing is getting started. The hardest thing is getting started. Getting out the blocks. So what steps are you taking to, forego, to forge ahead despite the obstacles. What are you doing right now? Are you preparing? Are you in school? Are you in training? Are you in a tutorial class? What are you doing to get ready to reach your ultimate goals? I pray this year that you're off to a good start. I pray that something we are saying, even in these lessons, are awakening you a little bit and shaking you to look for more out of your life and expect God to do more through your life. You're moving forward doors are opening. Every step you take, God is doing something. You cannot be denied. As you step out, write those things down and watch God open those doors. Remember, when God is with you and on your side, you are unstoppable. You cannot be stopped. Um, I'm not an enabler tonight. I'm a faith pusher. Do not have your dreams and give them to someone else and they're going to try to fulfill that dream for you with you. No, they're going to have you, give you the faith and help you push that dream forward. It's better for you to have tried and not think to fail than to tr not try at all. Dream big. You owe it to yourself to be the best version of you and not stop until you're uh, satisfied with who you are. You owe it to yourself. 
Sometimes it might cause you to disconnect from people, behaviors, habits, traditions of your past. But if it's going to help you reach your goal, then do it. Dreaming big, it re bigger requires joy, okay, in the process. Be happy in what you're doing. Take a few moments and celebrate yourself along the way. I'm preaching to the choir, but every now and then, you got to be happy about where you're going and getting closer to what God is doing for you and in you again and through you. Work hard, play hard, enjoy life, and live more abundantly. Dream big. Set clear goals. Commit your goals in writing. Create and, and implement an action item plan A and plan B. Stick to it, stay on track, and reach your goal. I decree I am ready, willing, and able to achieve all my goals. I have the courage to begin. I have the courage to succeed. I will turn my dreams into goals, my goals into plans, my plans into actions, my actions into realities. I'm confidently and fearlessly believing in myself and with God and God's help, I am unstoppable. Dream big. Listen, beloved, I pray that you're grabbing this lesson. I'm not teaching just motivational inspiration. I am faith pushing and capacity stretching. Things will fall in the water, pick it back up again. Dreams will fall off, pick them back up again. Finish your book this year. Go back to school if that's your drive. Pick up that business whatever that art or artisticness that God has given you. Everyone has a talent. Some have two, some have five. But pick it back up again and watch God blow on that thing. The average become unaverage. The uncommon, the common become uncommon. When God begins to step into your life, dream big and surround yourself with others, like-minded believers, like-minded business people who want a little bit more out of life. Father, we thank you now for this word tonight. I pray that it becomes a blessing, it becomes revelation, it becomes impactful in the lives of we, your people. Someone right now is tapped into what we are speaking about tonight, and they've been thinking about, could it be me? Can God do something through me? Assure them tonight, Lord God, that it is them, and you can use them, and they're going to reach their full potential, because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. I challenge you, I stretch you, I implore you, dream big. God bless you tonight.